Okay, just a small demonstration on how to transfer timer variables to and from GT Works and GX Works um, from a PLC and a HMI perspective. Right, so first things first, start a new project. Okay, let's use a timer on type of block, a timer off type of block, and a timer pulse type of block. Right, so timer on. Time off. And timer pulse. Now each one of these timer blocks have a different functionality. Um, you will have to go into their um, respective help files to see how they work. Just an example of how this can be done. If you press the question mark, it will open the applicable help file. Another way is to click on the block, let it um, uh, be highlighted blue, and then you press the F1 key. And what will do? What happen is it will open the help file. So for this block, this help file opened, and we will explain to you the operation of this block or this this one which we did you can f1 open help file and it will open the respective help file for that block as well right anyway so we've got two inputs for each block and two outputs for each block to be configured so since we are going to need to transfer these variables to a GT Works platform, in other words, the HMI, the Core Development GT Design platform, they will have to have device, each variable applicable will have to have device register addresses for this transfer. This is only possible with a global variable. So let's see, we've got a timer on block and we want to activate that block. Go timer off block. Uh, which also needs to be active. I don't think you can copy and paste it. Also needs to be activated. And of course, a, um, I think we first need to complete this line. So this will be a bit type. And then a um, timer off. Let's see what's happening here. That uh, copy and paste that uh, change there, so. Then move that board there. Okay, let's try again. Timer on. Activate. It's a bit type. Timer off. Activate. It's a bit type as well. Timer pulse. But that as well. Then also all of them will have an output. So we'll have a timer on output variable. Timer off variable. Timer pulse output variable. All of them of course being bit as well.
then each one of them will have a, a preset time, which is user defined. It will be of data type time. And then lastly, each one of them will have a elapsed time. Not user defined, but program operation defined. So. Notice that I'm able to copy and paste now. Uh, my mistake previously was to copy the entire table, not just the text. Okay, that happens sometimes. Okay, variables are set, but remember, we have to output these variables to God. So what happens now? We're gonna have to display the details and give each one a, an address. So bits can be inputs, outputs, or M registers, and obviously time will be a 16-bit word D register. So I'm gonna go M100. Not one, two, three, four, five. So they, 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 sit, they are the six bit variable addresses, and then the D is D one hundred. Right, so variables are declared, global variable labels are uh, created. Now we can just call them in here. So I'm just gonna say timer on. It will be the activate, timer on. This will be your preset time. Oops, I meant to block. Uh, Time on reset time. This will be my timer on output and timer on elapsed time. Timer off, activate. Timer pulse, timer off pulse, uh, preset time. Timer of output, timer of elapsed time. Okay, then for my timer pulse uh, timer block, uh, this will be my timer pulse activate, timer pulse preset time, uh, timer pulse output. And uh, timer pulse the lapse time. Right. Um, obviously, labels can be used to make uh, the uh, blocks more user friendly. Um, more information um, will yield a more efficient program. So, this will be my timer on inputs. Just gonna give it some color here. Timer on outputs. Timer off. Inputs. Outputs and 